ISIS has claimed responsibility for two suicide bombings in Uganda's capital, Kampala, Tuesday, killing at least three people along with three suicide bombers. Investigators believe they were coordinated attacks near a police station and on a street near the nation's parliament building. At least two dozen people were hospitalized with injuries from that blast, and four of them had crucial injuries. Ugandan officials have been urging vig vig vigilance in the wake of a string of bomb explosions in recent weeks. Our Mark Martin spoke with CBN News senior international correspondent Gary Lane for a closer look at why these Islamic groups are on the attack in Uganda and how Christians can pray. Gary, does this attack come as a surprise to you? Not really, Mark, because ISIS has been very active in Uganda. Just last month, there was an attack against a police station. No one was killed, but there was a bombing there. And this comes as no surprise to people that we've had on the global lane, because we've talked about how the coup in Sudan may have uh, occurred, because the government there, or the military leaders, I should say, uh, were concerned about ISIS rising and other radical Islamic terror groups like the Muslim Brotherhood and so forth uh, in the region. So they have been active in the region. They're based in the Democratic Republic of Congo and they're allied or uh, friends with uh, this group called the Allied Democratic Forces in Uganda. That's a homegrown group. ISIS is really operating out of the neighboring DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Why are terrorists wanting control of this part of Africa? Well, they've wanted it ever since Idi Amin was in power back in the 1970s. He was a Muslim dictator who uh, gave them uh, everything or access to the government and many different things. They, they want those days back again. As you know, uh, President Museveni is a Christian. He's been in power for 35 years, and these Islamic groups would like to see him out. They want to have more control and more say in the government. Gary, talk about the pastor that was killed around the same time as these explosions. Well, actually, uh, the pastor was killed about three weeks ago in eastern Uganda, just north of Lake Victoria. His name was uh, Stephen uh, Lugawe. And uh, what happened to him is he's a 58-year-old pastor who had planted a church about two years ago. And he and his daughter were out tending to some animals early one evening last month. And uh, the daughter says, according to the daughter, and this is according to Morningstar News, uh, the daughter said that three Muslim men came and said, look, we'd warned you about tearing down the church. You've had it for two years. You haven't done that. And uh, now you're going to face the wrath of Allah. And they clubbed him on the head, Mark, and they also stabbed him to death. And uh, he has one uh, son and seven daughters left behind. This pastor who is leading many Muslims in that area of Uganda to Christ. Yeah, it's horrific. Yeah, it is. Horrific details there. What is the situation for Christians there overall and how should we pray? Well, overall, the church is growing in Uganda. I just talked to a, a pastor friend of mine in Uganda earlier today and he was telling me about a three-day mission that he just had, an outreach, where uh, many people came to Christ. So many people are coming to Christ in Uganda. Uh, we need to pray for them uh, that they will, uh, those new ones will come to a strong faith in the Lord and grow in their faith in Christ. Other countries in Africa that are hot spots for terrorism, Gary? Uh, well, obviously, uh, Somalia, it always has been. The Al Shabaab terror group is aligned with this uh, Allied Democratic Forces group in Uganda, also with uh, ISIS in, in parts of Africa. Uh, so, Somalia is a, a big problem. Another big problem right now is Ethiopia. And the battle there, a war that is brewing between uh, the Ethiopian government and the Tigray forces there. Uh, the president of Uganda, Museveni, has wanted to bring about a peace conference uh, to bring peace in that area. But so far, the Tigray rebels uh, have resisted that effort. Back in Uganda, talk about how the U.S. is responding to that, or have they? Well, uh, look, the, the U.S. isn't doing much in the region. I mean, the... the <laughs> There was criticism of the Sudan government, that coup that took place there. Uh, it wasn't as vocal as it probably uh, may have been otherwise. But uh, look, there, what everyone in the region is telling me is we need the Americans to be engaged and involved in helping us stop this rise of ISIS in Africa and also these other militant groups like the Allied Democratic Forces and Al-Shabaab. And uh, so far, they're not seeing much much happen there on that. Well, prayer is definitely needed about yes. the U.S. role in all of this. Yes. And then also, too, for the, our brothers and sisters in Uganda and just the Absolutely. situation overall. Can you yeah. lead us in prayer, Gary? Sure, be glad okay. to. Thank you, sir. Lord, we thank you for the bold missionaries from the Anglican Church, the CMS missionaries, that uh, took the lead and went to Uganda 145 years ago uh, to lead people to Christ. And there's much fruit today. 15 million Anglicans in Uganda today 
today, 5 million evangelicals and Pentecostals, many people of faith, and it's growing. So we pray that the new believers there, Lord, will grow in their strength and their love for you, uh, be discipled by many other Christians uh, there, and that the Christians that are there will be protected by you, Lord. Uh, we, we thank you for President Museveni, who's done what he can to protect them, but uh, many Ugandans say they need a change now. So we pray, if it isn't President Museveni, that you bring a new leader, uh, a Christian, a godly one, and we pray for godly leadership in Uganda. And we pray that our leaders in the United States of America will also see the need to strengthen our alliance with the Ugandan forces and also with the people of Uganda, Lord, to uh, not only help them with military aid and, and advice and support, but also to provide humanitarian relief for those who are suffering uh, and those who will continue to suffer uh, many in your name. So, Lord, we just uh, pray for Uganda. We thank you for that country and the friendship that we have, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray that they will have stronger backs to carry their crosses at this difficult time in that country and the peace of, you, of Lord Jesus to be upon that uh, nation. Pour out your spirit upon Uganda. In Jesus' name we pray.